In this video, we're going to take a look at the advanced networking features and options that are built into Google Wi-Fi. In order to access Google Wi-Fi's advanced settings, we need to open the Google Wi-Fi app. The first screen that we will see is the status screen, which will show us basic information about our mesh network. Let's select Shortcuts and Settings. From within the Settings section, we need to choose Network and General to see the advanced network settings for Google Wi-Fi. The first option relates to the wireless network and is labelled by the wireless access point name you assigned the wireless network when you first configured Google Wi-Fi. Mine is called My Doodad's Wi-Fi. Let's take a look at these settings. As you can see, there are not many options available in this section. We have an option to reveal the wireless password for this wireless access point. There is an option to share the wireless password, which allows you to share the password via email or text. And we have an edit button, which allows us to make changes to either the wireless access point's name, or the wireless access point password. Let's return to settings. Next, we have some options that allow us to make changes to the wireless nodes that we have already configured and are using as part of our mesh network. We can check that the wireless nodes are up to date with the latest firmware. We have an option to restart the network if we're experiencing problems with our wireless network. And we have an option to do a complete factory reset on all of the nodes that make up our mesh network. We then have the options for looking at the network settings for each node that makes up our mesh network. Let's have a look at the family room node. First, we have an option to adjust the indicator light built into the family room node. Next, we have the option to restart just the family room node. You can see the option Remove Device is greyed out. This is because the node is the primary node for the mesh network. In other words, this is the Google Wi-Fi node connected directly to the broadband modem, so factory resetting this node would break the connection to the other nodes in the mesh network. However, you will find this option is enabled for the other nodes that make up the mesh network. In the details section, we have information about this node, its status, the wide area network IP address the node is connected to, the local area IP address the node is using, the node model number, and finally how the node is connected. The last option in Wi-Fi settings is to add a Wi-Fi point to the mesh network. As we've already looked at this option in another video, we will return to settings. As the name suggests, advanced networking allows us to adjust some of the more advanced network settings for our wireless network. However, one of the major sticking points for me is the lack of support for using your own DHCP range. DNS, or Domain Naming Service, allows us to change the DNS settings for our wireless network. As you can see, DNS is set to automatically use Google's DNS servers. However, if you would prefer, you can use either your internet service provider's DNS servers, or you can use a custom DNS server such as OpenDNS. I'm going to leave the defaults enabled for now. Next up, we have WAN or Wide Area Network Settings. The first option shows us the WAN IP address that you are using to connect to the internet. Then under WAN settings, we have three options, DHCP, static, and PPPoE. However, as we've already set up Google Wi-Fi to use PPPoE, the ability to edit this setting has been disabled. For anyone that's familiar with router configurations, you may have noticed that there is no option to manage your DHCP settings. This means that you can only use the 192.168.68 IP range in your Google Wi-Fi network. 
So for anyone wishing to configure their DHCP subnet in a specific way, this could be a problem. As Google Wi-Fi will automatically assign an IP address in the 192.168.68 range, any device that you connect to your mesh network will use something called a dynamic IP address. Put simply, when a device connects to Google Wi-Fi, there is no guarantee that that device will use the same IP address as it had previously used. In most instances, this is not really a problem, but for a device like a printer, which always has to have the same IP address, this is so that computers know where to send print jobs to, using a dynamic IP address is no good. DHCP IP reservation allows you to assign a static IP address to a device so that that device always uses the same IP address when it's connected to Google Wi-Fi. At the moment, we have not made any DHCP IP reservations. However, as I've connected a printer to Google Wi-Fi, I need to reserve the IP address that the printer is currently using before I go and install the printer drivers on all the devices around the home. To reserve the printer, we need to select the Add icon in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. A list of all the devices currently connected to Google Wi-Fi are displayed, along with their MAC addresses. It is this unique code that Google Wi-Fi uses to ensure that a specific device has a static IP address. The device called HP is a HP 8600 printer that I previously connected to Google Wi-Fi. If I had any doubts that this device was my printer, I would go to the printer and compare its MAC address with the MAC address displayed here. Let's highlight HP and select Next. We are now asked to choose an IP address that we wish to reserve for the printer to use. At the moment, I only have a few devices connected to my Google Wi-Fi network, but to try and avoid using an IP address already used by another device, let's set the address to 192.168.86.200. When we select Next, the settings are saved. And we can select Done. You can now see that the HP printer has been listed as having a reserved IP address. If you wish to remove a DHCP IP reservation for a device, you simply need to select the Edit button. This will display a delete icon which you can use to remove the IP address reservation for that device. Port forwarding allows you to send specific types of internet data to a device on your network. For most home users, this is probably a feature that you will not use unless you're looking to remotely access devices connected to Google Wi-Fi. Some of the more common uses for port forwarding involve hosting your own website or remotely accessing a network attached storage device. To set up port forwarding, you need to select the Add button. You are then shown a list of all the devices which have a reserved IP address. Here you can see the HP printer we just added. If I want to create a forward to the printer, I simply highlight it and select Next. However, as I want this printer to be accessible only to devices on my home network, I will return to Advanced Networking. UPnP, or Universal Plugin and Play, is a networking protocol that allows devices on your network to connect to each other and share data. In a business environment, UPnP is usually disabled as it can have an adverse effect on network performance. However, for a home user, UPnP removes a lot of the complexity associated with running your own network. For example, as a home user, you really don't want to have to set up the correct firewall rules or enable port forwarding just to play a video game online. But if you do want to disable UPnP, you simply need to toggle this switch to the off position. However, for this setup, we're going to leave UPnP enabled. Let's now return to Advanced Networking. Network mode is automatically set by Google Wi-Fi and simply shows you how the nodes that make up your mesh network are connected. 
In this example, the primary node is in NAT mode, while the secondary nodes are in bridge mode. IP6 is a newer networking protocol designed to replace IP4. However, your internet service provider more than likely is not yet using this standard, so this option has been automatically disabled by Google Wi-Fi. If or when your ISP eventually swaps you over to IP6, then this is the place where you can enable the protocol. Let's return to settings. Under general, we have managers. And you can see that currently my doodads is the owner of this Google Wi-Fi network. But if you want to add additional family members to manage the network, then you can add them here. Each manager will have to have their own Google account and they will not be able to perform factory resets on any of the nodes that make up the Google Wi-Fi mesh network. App and support details as the name suggests, allows you to contact Google for technical support for your Google Wi-Fi network. You can contact Wi-Fi Care, review terms of services, privacy policies and licenses, and you can see the version number of the app we're using. Privacy allows you to enable or disable the collection of certain types of information that Google use to help them manage your mesh network. Enabling or disabling these settings will be a judgment call on your part. However, I would suggest that you enable Google Wi-Fi cloud services, enable Wi-Fi point usage stats, but disable Google Wi-Fi app usage stats. Finally, we have email notifications, which simply allows us to choose if we wish to receive emails from Google. I would recommend that you disable announcements and offers but leave the updates about your Google Wi-Fi enabled as it will send you tips and analytics about your network. So to recap, we've taken a look at the advanced settings within Google Wi-Fi and we've identified a potential issue for anyone wishing to use their own DHCP subnet range within a Google Wi-Fi mesh network.